What's up, y'all? This is your boy, Raz Cass, and I'm politicking with my homeboy, Poe, at Poe Politicking, at Self Help Plus Hip Hop. So, what's up, Poe? What up, Dago? What's up, Oceanside? California in the building. We preserving the hip hop culture and introducing the future stars, and obviously, that's Liddy. So, make sure you subscribe to the Homie Poe's podcast, pull up, and tap in. Peace. Popolitikin.com Uh-huh, uh-huh They ain't never seen nothing like this before Welcome back to PolePolitaking.com. This is your home for self-help meets hip-hop. Make sure you go on Spotify. We're on Apple Music. We're on YouTube. You get to watch the video on YouTube, audio on the rest of the platforms. But one, two, one, two, I'm place to be with Pearl Energy. How you doing? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. No doubt. What's Pearl Energy about? Uh, Pearl Energy is um, a character stage name that I came up with uh, last June. Actually. Literally, last my last birthday, right before I turned 22. I'm about to turn 23 in a week. Wow. Um, yes. And the name, um, it's pretty much another way of saying, if you want to break it down, it's another way of saying jade energy because my birthstone is a pearl. So it is, it's pearl energy. I mean, it's just, it's just a way for me to like have a fun way of saying me, but make it still sound like a stage name. <laughs> mm. Now, I know you you uh, produce movie um, videos, music videos, and your artists. So how did you get into uh, both of those? Well, um, I started with, you know, the camera back when uh, I was about 13 years old in 2009. Um, I was a YouTube personality doing reality TV show episodes, skits, um, and parodies with just an iPhone 4. And... Um, I kind of got sick with the videos, just editing on iMovie. And I was like, 
I really should turn this into a business. So I started shooting like local rappers around here. My first music video was like $50. And um, I mean, looking back at it, I mean, you could definitely Did you do it see with your progress. Phone? No, at that point, I had got a little a little Canon T3i, a little 1080p. Um, but I was doing everything else prior to that with the phone. Because so, I got like a little uh, vlogger camera. So can I get in the game with that or I need a better camera? Oh, I got. No, I just typed in YouTube game. vlogging camera and I got the little camera so I, I can get in the game. It really don't even matter. now. As long as it look clear, they do not care. But... It just depends on, you know, obviously what level you're trying to go with it. Like, if you want to do the run and gun, it'll work. But, you know, obviously the big budget productions, they have in the big cameras. <laughs> What's the run and gun? Run and gun is just like, uh, hey, I want to shoot a video. Okay, cool. We're pulling up three locations. Most likely they're outside. And then you edit it to make it look good. <laughs> so, so I actually, I actually just the other day I was in the studio and I saw them doing the video shoot. So I saw the dude with the lights and I saw the dude with the little camera and he just like moving around, everybody rapping. Yeah. So I guess like somebody like, you know, we interview a lot of young people. So anybody trying to be, do that, what, like give us some steps. Like what do they really need? So they not coming in there just straight half ass. What should they, what should they have? I mean, all you really need is a, a, I would say in 2020, just go ahead and get a 4k camera um a good lens and a stabilizer uh as long as you have a computer to edit i use final cut i don't i'm not really a adobe girl i like final cut uh and i mean youtube tutorials can teach you everything you need to know but as long as you have good like personal skills to where because this is a who you know who you're friends with type situation if you have never shot a video in your life but you shoot the hottest person in your city literally everybody will just call your phone like it doesn't even matter your resume like it's just who's shooting the hottest person that's all they care about because everybody who's trying to get in their position every artist is going to want to shoot with who they just worked with that's how but, it really what is. makes a hot video to you i mean in my opinion now a hot video is uh, one that people want to share because otherwise what's going to make them rewatch it? I mean, the goal is not to just get one view from the person. It's really to get more than that from one person. Like whether that's them watching it over or them sending it to people, you know? So what are some of you, give us your, your top five favorite videos that you watch. Music videos that mm -hmm. are not mine? Yeah. Um... I would say top five. Uh, I mean, I gotta give it to him. When Six Nine came out with that gummo, that was like so viral everywhere. Like it was thirty viral factors. He hit so many points in that video. So that video really is a pretty legendary video. You a Six Nine um, fan? I'm not no fan. I, I just see the hair. I, I was gonna ask you that, but I was like. I don't know. I see the hair. I thought you... No. Pearl Energy is repping some whole other stuff, and I can be colorful without being 6 9 If anything, I was still doing this, and I do different colors than 6 9 Oh, so six, he nine, you. To be honest, I mean, because girls have long hair. Like, I mean, so I'm not really going to sit up here and say, like, I'm not trying to do all that, and I'm not into the beef. Like, I'm over here in the pop <laughs> lane. I'm into the pop lane. He can do whatever he wants to do. Like, I really don't care because I would not have to come up and beef with somebody for views. Like, I actually make good songs. <laughs> Obviously, what other videos besides that one? Um, So, I like that one. I like... uh I'm trying to think of a good Drake video. Um just because I I respect him and admire his artistry. I would say uh, probably, oh, I like that Every Girl in the World, mm. Young Money. That one was like classic. Um, also a fan of Money to Blow. I mean, these are just videos that were like back when it wasn't so easy to shoot one, you know? So you really had to get a director, be on set, you know, 106 in park days, you know, like it wasn't just go outside and shoot it. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to take you back a little bit, even, cause I know you're a little younger than me. I'm a little older, but I don't know if you know all Michael Jackson's videos, his videos are like movies. 
Yeah, I know some of them. I'm not. Like I'm not Smooth gonna lie. To you. That was like a whole movie. If you ever seen Smooth Criminal, and then that, I uh, seen some of them. Black or white. Black or white was hard too. I mean, I am a little bit like you know young. I didn't see all of them. Not gonna lie to you and tell you that I just did my Michael Jackson history, but um, I've seen some of the older videos, and I know like how much more dramatic they were, you know, in production. So are you, so are you still on YouTube now? Um, currently I'm running the Del Valley Studios YouTube channel, uh, with the videos that get shot under my production company. They go up there. I do upload my own ones on there, but as far as just being on there doing parodies and stuff, not too much, not really. Yeah, because my um, I got a couple of homies, even myself, like trying to grow our YouTube page. You know, so what are some ways mm -hmm. we can grow it? Um, I would say uh, you could either go the route of partaking in the trends. I mean, you're never gonna not get views, like making a video related to what everybody is searching at the time. So. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that if you have an, an entertainment page and you want to get a lot of subscribers fast, maybe look into reaction videos for the hottest videos coming out, mainstream artists, or if you're into, you know, politics or people, blog type videos, um, sp literally videos that are titled correctly of somebody speaking their opinion on the controversy going in the world, you may get a lot of views. It's really just, it's really just hitting areas that people want to see because they would, you're not going to get clicked if it's just stuff that you want to do unless you already have a following, you know, to where now they're tuned into what you want to share. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. So like, from, go ahead. No, what are you saying? I was just saying like from the ground up, like if you come on there with zero subscribers, like I would say do some things that you know is going to be shareable and like make somebody want to click it you know mm. and then and then uh, so how what got you into rapping well not well, rapping what you do you do like i don't know because i'm confused now because like <laughs> nowadays rapping sound like singing singing sound like rapping so i don't be right. know what people be doing <laughs> so what, what would you say what's your what's your sound how you describe your sound um, I'm definitely more pop now. Uh, I do have out of my album that's coming out next week. It's 15 songs. I would say about five of them are pop and I didn't do it like this where it's like a calculated split, but somebody asked me the other day, how many pop songs I have. So like about five are pop, um, five are more melodic rap. And then some of them, the rest is like R and B like, so, who, so who are you then? How would you, how would you describe yourself? I would say with this debut album, I'm definitely, like I said, claiming pop. I'm claiming um, a kid-friendly, uh, all-around, um, like, like mainstream appeal. Like, and I see this open lane right now so clear um, because a lot of people and females are trying to come up and be the next Cardi B. I see an open lane right now in the pop world because there is no African-American female pop star like you type black female rihanna? Pop star on google rihanna they're older oh, they're older rihanna, i'm talking though. about oh, new. young oh, okay let me say rihanna. if you type if you type pop you will see rihanna you'll see janet jackson beyonce carrie hilson but like new age like how they have the new like a ariana grande like this is a new caucasian pop star you know i don't see a black one, like, and I see an open lane right there. So that is where I'm going. Yeah, actually, uh, it's, she's younger, though, but she's, like, 16. Her name's Brooklyn Queen. She up oh, there. Oh, yeah, I, I know yeah. about her. Dove yeah. told me about her. Yeah, she up there. So I, I would say her, but she's younger than you, so. Yeah, we sound totally different. I mean, a lot of people call me the female Drake. Oh No, I was going to say... When I was listening to you, you kind of, I, I was listening to one of your songs. You was reminding me of Dave Love a little bit. Which song was it? Because let me tell you, that old stuff is not accurate. Yeah, it, it, was, it was something old because it was like 2017. It was, it was older stuff. Oh, so. my gosh. Not accurate. So you didn't see that new Pearl Energy video. Okay. But you dropped it. So when is the project? I know you said it's dropping pretty soon. Uh, June 12th, next Friday, actually. So this Friday coming out. 
So did it get delayed or anything, or it came out on time? I know the coronavirus is pushing back a lot of artist stuff. Well, yeah, I was actually supposed to be on a European tour right now. We were supposed to leave the 25th of May. It was like a month-long tour, like Switzerland, Germany, London, Paris, uh, Israel. Like, it was a whole thing. The virus, uh, obviously, European travel ban, so that got canceled. My album, I was going to put it out two weeks before the tour, so I was really going to put it out, like, May 8th. Cause we was gonna leave like May 24th, but once the um the tour got canceled, I'm like, okay, I have to still put something out, but it's not dependent on tour anymore. So I just decided I'm gonna just get it in there before I turn 23. Yeah, I'm I'm actually I'm really um, impressed. Like you're doing a lot. I didn't, you're young. Thank you. <laughs> so how you, you sound, and then you sound self-made. Like you got a team, or is it you? What's up? Yeah, I actually have a self-made tattoo. <laughs> but um, as far as like who helped me really do it, like I got a couple friends who you know are solid and and helped me get from place to place. And like you know, whenever I um lost my camera I actually got robbed of my camera it wasn't like no stick up but it was it was like a car breaking mm -hmm. so whenever whenever I lost my camera you know I have some friends who were letting me borrow their camera you know so it was people coming to my assistance with stuff that I needed you know but as far as like the perseverance part the the planning part of what I'm trying to do like yeah I had to I really did, I can say I did that part by myself because like, especially with where we're from, like, I mean, people sometimes get lost, you know, like they get caught up in trying to be the hottest local star, you know, and like, I had a phase where I was trying to do that, like, win over Baton Rouge, but it's like, that is the part where I realized, man, if I'm trying to really be like, big, like, the way Louisiana works, you know, you go it's kind of like, yeah, you kind of Everybody like, say that. Everybody in interview says the same thing. You got to go outside. You, you go, you blow up, then everybody going to be like, oh, oh yeah. we messed up. <laughs> you hometown <laughs> hero, you're going to have parades and everything. Yeah. Man, yeah, I, I mean, mean. I don't know if you, I mean, I'm not like the super religious, but it's kind of the story of the prodigal son. It's that story. I haven't heard that story. What prodigal is it? Prodigal son was like, uh, it was, it was like a son and he basically, uh, he left to go search for riches and then, he left for years and he was broke and he had no money. Then he came and his dad was like a king. So he came back and he had everything, but he had to leave first. You know what I'm saying? So it's Oh, kind of to come back to his wealth. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can attest to that. I mean, and here's the thing too, like. You have to leave and prove yourself. People, like, regardless of, of whatever I do in the music industry, people can't say I ain't did what I did for Louisiana, visually. Because none of these people running around here will have no type of image, no type of nothing. I'm the one who got behind that camera and made them look like somebody and got some people record deals off my own videos. I didn't see people that I've shot videos for die. Like, I mean, my name is throughout the state based on the work I've done. So they can say what they want to say about the music, but... I'm really an OG, like whatever they want to yeah, say. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You are, because you said you started when you was like 10 years, 12 years old, right? 13? With the camera, yeah, but yeah. I started shooting music videos around the city at 18. Well, shit. So, still, five years? <laughs> okay. Yeah. How many videos did you shoot? Um, Client videos, I have over 300. I mean, Name some of the artists. Well, Sherwood Marty, J.D. Youngin, Nino Calvin, uh, B.T.Y. Youngin. He was blowing up so hard, and then he um, died, R.I.P. Um, also worked with G. Money. Um, he was the one beefing with Young Boy, and then he got murdered. I mean, it's a lot of these local stars that I've come, like, very close with and it's just crazy to you know have footage of these people and then the next day they're gone like you know but that's, and that's another that's reason that footage. That's it is good it is good but it's like that's another reason why i'm not gonna sit up here and act like i'm street because yeah you can see what, what do you yeah, think about like, that? like all those all the depths in hip-hop what do you think about that 
I think that it's ridiculous because what are y'all dying for? Like territorial reasons to prove that you're that hard. I mean, y'all ain't really, y'all ain't really like, it's just not smart. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, who you gonna have to face when you leave? You know, you got to face God with what you did, whether you did it with your own hands or you put a hit out on. So whatever, like, I'm just not into all that. That's another reason why I am going in a separate lane. I'm just not going to sit up here and act like the music industry does not come with a lot of baggage. If you choose to portray yourself a certain way, you know, chain snatching and all this shit. Like, I'm not with that, you know? That's good. Now, I want you to talk about, I'm actually about to interview him next. Uh, I'll make sure I say his name right. So the guy that makes the song, Get the Gat. Yes, Little Else. Little, little Else. Else. Yeah, I'm about to say Little Eight. So I'm going to say a Little Elk. But yeah, it's a, that's a good story, man. Because like those, that was an old song from 92. Then y'all did the video and came back to life. So that, that I is, mean, it's oh, a lot more. It's a lot old? more that I'm doing with that. Like, for one, let's put it like this. When I came into the situation, with Lil Elk, um, nothing was together. I'm talking, the song was illegally uploaded on iTunes by somebody else. There was no copyright in place that even showed it was his rights to the song. There was nothing together. He was collecting no money and this shit was number 13 on the iTunes High 100, okay? Mm. So somebody getting all his money. That money. yeah. So, and, and the person that uploaded it, actually, the reason why they were uploading it, it was like a person claiming to be a DJ with a compilation tape. They had that shit out since 2016, and they lucked up because it, it went viral, and, oh, now that's the one they're searching. They're getting abused. You know, and Elk's 40-something years old. He's not knowing how to fix this, how to whatever. He has, like, 400 followers on Instagram with no type of post. So when I came in, it was a mess. And I really took on a manager role. I came in, cleaned up his whole social media. I've been running it ever since. Um, came in and did all the, all the business matters, getting everything taken down off all the streaming platforms, getting his re-uploaded. The artwork that's on there right now, the Get the Get, that says Buy Lil L, is actually his first artwork he ever had for that song, like yeah. since 1992. And it's just amazing to him for like for that song, not only to blow up 28 years later, but to to actually be able to collect the check off the shit, you know, when according to him in 92, nobody ever even gave him any money because he's 17 when he did the song. Um, the people who were distributing the vinyls, they were not letting him see no type of money, not letting him even know what it was generating. And when I, when I stepped in, you know, I just wanted to do the right thing. And, and I knew what to do, you know, how to get it right on BMI, who to talk to to be able to get the video released. I came in and just, just really just took over the whole situation. And the video, you know, it's an eight minute video. Like this is like my most extensive music video I've ever done in my life. Like I shot it over the period of like two weeks, um, just going back and forth Baton Rouge to New Orleans and getting scenes that I felt like were most important. Um, so, like, with him, um, I will say that is one of the most genuine men that I have ever worked with. Like, and I am, like, it's to the point, like, I get a managerial cut of everything, you know, because of what I'm doing. You know, when we were booking the shows before coronavirus, um, I'm getting a, a managerial fee, like, and my end goal with that, like, we are, we are going to get a record deal off this record. You know, he has his stats, like, set over 10 million across all platforms, you know. So whether it is a single deal, because um, I don't see him doing, you know, 10, three albums, whatever, we're just going to get that single deal. But really, we're going to do a remix with some big mainstream artists. I mean, Wayne's already... Wayne already yeah, did you gotta get mix. electronica and Jay Z on there since they already uh you know he kind of hyped it up. That's how I heard about. It. I was like, oh, I remember that, I remember him saying that in that song because you heard that verse, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I negotiated the deal with Rock Nation, so oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I did the shit, you know, and I'm I'm walking in the shit blindfold, just just really like wow, these are real label people calling my phone behind this song, and this is that's how I know 
you know, I'm really meant for something really big because I did not like plan on doing nothing with Get the Gat. And this is something where I'm actually seeing the back end, the sample clearances, the real, how this really go with these non recoupable fees and the publishing deals and shit. Like, cause I'm involved with Get the Gat, so I'm able to use that with the connects that I'm getting from my own shit, you know? So it's really like what you're not going to see. You're not going to just be able to learn everything that I just learned from Get the Gat just from watching YouTube videos. Like, it's something you really have to go through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to say, you are, you're, you're a young mogul. Like, because I'm telling On you, some you know, shit. It's, people, it's people, like, I interview a lot of people, and it's like old artists that don't be knowing the shit you know. And you know a lot of shit to be so young. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Where you trying to go? Where you trying? Where you see your your uh, your brand like five years from now? Uh, well, as far as Del Valley Studios, um, I look at it as a uh, it is gonna be a record label, but I see it more of a um, like a creative control agency, like where um artists that I believe in and whoever my team is at the time believes in, um because of the connections and the, the resources and information that I was able to learn and, and build upon throughout my artist career, I'll be able to use that for that artist that we believe in at the time to get them through the door, especially people from Louisiana. Cause I just, they ain't been nobody to really come back and really do it the right way. Like from Louisiana. I mean, it's just like everybody that came up, they got something to say about whether they really came back and picked up Louisiana artists and some of them get some of them, but it's like, bruh, like it ain't really like pushing the main street, like Wayne, the way Wayne pushed Drake through the dough. You yeah. know, that's what I'm talking about. Like all the way through the door. And I also understand this. You think, I what mean, the I mean, people you're younger, but what about P? P. Master P. Come on, Master P? Yeah. Um, he yeah, was I mean, with, They were dropping albums every month. Who are you speaking on that he pushed through? Shit, I guess you could say Silk, See Murder, at least them two. I mean, yeah. But you I saying mean, like I, big, that, big. Yeah, I'm talking about, and then also having like a certain type of appeal too. Like I'm talking about like, be able to get some endorsement deals and commercials because you are like, I'm looking, I'm thinking more international. Like I'm thinking okay. more, I'm not really, you know, because I don't really come from, like I said, the whole street shit. So like, I know how to like market a street person. Sure. Like put a certain amount of props in their videos. Yeah. You might, you got a higher chance of going viral, but that doesn't mean that, I resonate with that, you know? I would much rather get people that I would listen to for real, you know? But other than Del Valle Studios, like, that's just one thing. Like, as far as me, um, like, I plan on being a uh, Grammy award winning, and I understand everybody's like, oh, don't do it for the Grammys, don't it rig, <laughs> whatever. Like, I'm getting one be and BT awards for show. Sure couple platinum plaques i mean i plan on taking it all the way to the top like and everybody around me knows that so that's why you know and i will say this like like drake um okay his so far gone is what pushed him through the door lady gaga those were my two inspirations for this album drake and lady gaga lady gaga's album the fame is what pushed her through the door akon discovered her both of those people, Drake and Lady Gaga, put out that debut mixtape that pushed them through the door at 22 years old, right before they turned 23. So I'm like, man, it's a wrap. I got to push this <laughs> shit out now. For real. So I want you to talk about your upbringing. It sounds like you had a good upbringing. You got some good parents. Uh, My mom. Somebody uh, was teaching she... you some games. Somebody put you on. <laughs> That's what you think? You don't think you don't think I can just learn it? You gotta have a mentor sometimes. Somebody was helping you somehow. But who if, if you just learned on your own, who was you watching? Who was you studying? You were studying somebody. I was really watching shit on the internet and, and 
and getting in person with people like um my mom is in no way like um in the in the entertainment industry at all i mean my mom is a natural hustler so i get the i get the the hustle and the persuasion yeah, skills yeah. from her and my dad is a um like a technology person he makes apps so like you know me being that computer savvy and able to do this and that on the videos that's where you really get that from but as far as like who taught me the game or like you know the industry like no I really was just like studying shit on the internet um but my mom raised me she was a single mom uh my dad he came around about when I was like 16 and um we're both like you know I'm old enough now to make my own decisions so I have relationships with both of them um but I mean, I wouldn't say that we never, it's not that we ever struggled. Like my mom was single mom uh, in Baton Rouge doing hair. So, you know, working hours to be able to provide for both of us um, and stuff like that. We were living, you know, in apartments and different things. But I tell you this, my mom made sure that I never like went without, you know, like, and my hair was always on point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. All right. So what we uh, I was going to ask you, as far as, like, new artists, like you were saying, um, you studied a lot. So what would you tell new artists to study? What should they be studying? Um, I mean, if y'all want to, if y'all want to learn some shit real fast, as much as they like to talk down on them, y'all need to go watch a couple Russ interviews. Because that man be really telling y'all the game, but y'all don't want to hear him because of, of what the culture got to say about his cockiness and whatever else, but he really be putting it in clear perspective, what you need to watch out for, what, how this really go, you know? Um, I watched him, I watched, um, I watched a lot of, uh, like, me studying certain artists allowed me to know how they came up, like specifically I was looking, because because I I like, what levels certain artists were able to get to, like a Drake, like a Post Malone, like The Weeknd. I would look at how they came up. Like a lot of those um, before they were famous videos really help you out too because it tells you what they were doing before. And obviously nobody wants to like give away the game or just tell, okay, they put this song on SoundCloud <laughs> right. and they did that. They're not going to tell you everything, but it kind of gives you a little more perspective on who they met, you know, where they was at when they, when this lined up for them and then what pushed them through to the next level where they, were they like blue face where they were, you know, pulling up in parking lots, doing little concerts in their home city. And then, you know, the WAC 100 thing came in and people were um, talking down on him because he was putting out them little freestyles that sounded offbeat. So he was willing to take that heat, but it blew him up because it was so controversial. Like, did they go that route or did they go the Lil Nas X route and just do the one single thing and, and just get it in front of the right person with those memes? I mean, it's many ways it can be done, you know? Mm. So what are some of your interests outside of the music industry? Um, interests as far as what, real life? Yeah. I would say like behind the scenes, we got to get to know you. I like, um, I mean, well, I'm a very, I'm a very religious person. Um, so, um, I do believe I'm a Christian and I believe in, um, like, I like to, you know, watch, like, I believe in manifestation stuff, but I believe in manifestation through Christ. So I do spend time watching, you know, like, spiritually uplifting videos like and like i actually have a gospel song on my album okay. so i miracle okay um so i i like uh looking into that and studying the word um and i like uh food uh <laughs> i like to eat food and go to lavish restaurants and exclusive places i'm a big traveler what's the um, best what's your top restaurant you went to 
top restaurants. Yeah, which, <laughs> yeah, the one you went to that that's you know you still when you want to go back, what restaurant is that? That I want to go back. Well, I'm like I'm planning on I'm planning on I can't say it's my top, but I'm planning on going back to this is a restaurant called the Waffle in Los Angeles. I'm going to LA uh, on Thursday, so when I go. Like, I just went there just off the strength of I was trying to find a breakfast place one time in L.A. <laughs> and that was, I have never had no place like that. Like, that was just so good. Like, and everybody trying to say, I don't even remember. I don't remember. It was, it was like, just good. <laughs> some Dolce de Leche Waffle. I don't know. They all be trying to say Roscoe's Chicken and Waffle. Man, look, the waffle is killing the game. Is it L.A.? Yeah. Yeah, check that out too. And then I'll yep. ask you as far as the manifestation. This is like I said, self help meets hip hop. So I want you to talk about that a little bit. Um, as far as what, like my belief in it, or has yeah. it worked for me? Yeah, both. Um, yeah, like I found out about manifestation through YouTube. I mean, these are these are topics that I consider important. Uh, like self development topics that you're not taught in school, you know, right. like, um, and it's many gurus on YouTube that will break it down from A to Z what it is. Um, you know, Eric Ho, Dan Locke, uh, Aaron Doughty, like all these people. Oh, yeah, that, I, they heard just, I like, yeah, him. they, they breathe infinite waters. They breathe manifestation in and out. And, you know, I will say that it's a lot, like when you, when you first get into it, it's a lot of content on it. So you can become overwhelmed and start to overthink it just because, okay, they're like, okay, visualization and then ask the universe and then, <laughs> and then let it go. And then, and it's like, if you get to watching the videos all day and night, you start to be like, okay, when is it going to hit? You know, like, and so what I, what, what worked for me, I used to, um, I used to listen to the the sleep meditation ones that that would allow you to visualize before you Me go too. to sleep. I do that. Yeah, that those those worked for a while, and then I got into the um, quantum jumping. I don't know if you ever quantum jumped. Man, that shit works. <laughs> you only you only supposed to quantum jump. You don't quantum jump every day. You quantum jump. I've only quantum jumped twice, um, and it's like it's like you jumping into a. Um, alternate reality where the the better version of what you want of yourself exists so the the method is called the two cup method if you want to write it down but it's many it's many things that people put out there that you can do what what i learned works best for me is i i speak as if it is you know and and then i just detach like now it's so easy you know if i just set the intention and then i just let it go instead of watching all these videos on how to do it like it's really yeah. just you know because people we've been manifesting since we were young we didn't know you know when you wanted that bike and you hoped for that bike and then well, you got then, that bike <laughs> it was easier back then because you didn't have like you didn't real know. Dope. yeah so you just shit i want it i'm gonna keep saying i want it to your parents would be like damn and just get it <laughs> yeah like it just happened you know and that's why a lot of people try to say you got to get back to that childlike mindset with it mm -hmm. because, because it's, it's not so serious. It is just like the universe playfully helping you out. You see the signs. It's a movie. You know. Life is a movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm a firm believer. Do you listen to uh, Esther Hicks, Abraham? Yeah. I've actually seen her in person. Me too. I went to her, uh, her conference in Atlanta. I went to hers out here in San Diego. Okay. And then I actually did a, uh, you ever heard of that life behind the life? So it's like they uh put, they like tell you like you go to sleep. It's like past life regression, so you can like go back to your past lives and see who you was and where you was at. I, did I never seen that. I never did that one, but I did. I did the. They have this one manif manifestation technique by Aaron, uh, where it's like you call. It's called complete the past, and you go back and you 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 uh fix something that is. You know how they say um limiting beliefs or things that are holding you back from the past you go back and you you fix that cycle like so through the through the meditation you're going back to that day that let's just say that girl that was uh, abused as a child she goes back to that and then releases the emotions of that from back then and then she comes back and it completes the cycle like whatever like but that should be working
Yeah, we're gonna have to. I'm gonna have to bring you back on. We're gonna have to just talk about that. I can talk about that all day. That's my shit. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm saying, yeah. I'm just trying to, uh, but the way the way to me, that's why I say like if you listen to a lot of music, like a lot of these artists, especially in hip hop, they they rap about the shit they gonna get before they get it. Like Jay Z, oh, that, Jay Z, prime example. Jay Z, if you listen to Reasonable Doubt, it's like all the stuff he rapping about then he got, but he didn't probably have it back then. Yeah, that's. I mean, manifestation, like one form of it you know how they have scripting that visualization mm-hmm. one form of it is you know speaking it into existence and i believe that music is a very powerful tool to do that through because you like i mean they talk about it in think and grow rich napoleon hill they say uh mastermind group you know when two or more minds are fixed on the same thing it tends mm-hmm. to manifest way faster so if you are saying something that you would like to come into fruition on the track that hasn't yet and you've got the whole world listening to it all they mind is on is what you would like so it's gonna come into your reality way faster the same way i be telling rappers why y'all keep speaking that same struggle yeah, story yeah. on the track it's all good. about being stuck in the trap game the the murder the well, y'all really living in a loop I'm mean, gonna say, uh, speaking of that, since since you kind of understand it, I think a lot of these rappers, they law of attraction. So that's why a lot of these rappers be dying. They be talking about death. Even like it's I love Nipsey like Hussle. Trying to prepare, but that's a contradiction. But even like um, I love Nipsey Hussle, but you listen like his last song. Like he was talking about under no, no condition, you never catch me slipping. Talking about people shooting. I mean, oh, and that's why I'm so I'm so nervous. He was doing that. I'm nervous for Drake because this man, he keeps talking about that. Like, he keeps talking about when he goes and this and that. I don't know if you've been hearing his leaks yeah. and all that, but he's been talking about, oh, don't cry at my grave and all this. He's been saying that, but it's like, he know how powerful manifestation is because he did. I heard him talking about it so, before. He knows so too. why is he doing that? Yeah, you got to be, that's the thing I learned the most is like, you have to be careful with your words. Cause even they say like, you know, spells, spells is what's coming out your mouth. What you saying out your mouth. That's the spells. It's not abracadabra. It's that I am, whatever you say after that, or I'm doing this, that's the spell. Right. Well, I mean the whole, I would say this, the whole energy realm, that's the name of my album, uh, June 12th, the whole energy realm is one big manifestation. Like, the song after Miracle is called Breakthrough. Like, it's all, it's literally me saying, look, I'm here now. Uh, I'm not talking about how I'm about to. I'm already saying that I am, and and it is. All right. I want to say thank you for coming through Politicking with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. So time. I gotta, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna hold you to it a couple years from now. I'm gonna wait because I like to wait till you like really get out there and blow up. So then, once okay. you really, really get out there after that Grammy, I want to interview. Okay, not a problem. I don't want to hear no. I gotta go talk to this person. This person, I'm gonna just sit in that DM like, "What's up?" <laughs> That's I, how they be. That's how they be. Hell yeah, they be big now. They'll, they'll hit me with that. Oh, you gotta hit my manager. I'm like, bro, I just interview. You don't remember me? <laughs> Hey, you gotta hit my manager now to hit you with that after they after they get that Grammy and stuff. But what were the social medias? Um, so anybody interested in following me can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Pearl Energy with two Y's. The cast indeed doing. So they asked about me the other day. I told them I'm popping or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Free
Thanks for listening to Pole Politicking. Like I said, this is Self Help Meets Hip Hop. Try to interview the artists or whoever I'm interviewing. Just try to get a little bit more than just the music or just entertainment. Try to get some some stuff that you can use in your life that they're saying. And this is uh like they say, I got it out the mud. So 2008 we started it and been doing it this whole time. So I appreciate all the listeners we have, all my loyal listeners that stay stay down and listen to every episode. And so if you want to be a guest, make sure you got some fire. I want some heat. But you can contact me at polepoliticking at gmail.com. Yeah, if you want to be a guest, hit me up. And also, make sure you check out the store. We sell merch, rappertshirts.com. Rappertshirts.com. So I got the Pole Politicking merch on there. Got rapper t-shirts. Got men's fashion, women's fashion. Got cool stuff on there. Anybody, you know, you want to make donations, you just like what you hear. You're like, it's cool. I want to support this. Keep going. Because, you know. Takes money to build this and keep growing it. It's a cash app dollar sign pole politic and that's P O P O L I T I C K I N. I appreciate that or PayPal, Demo. It's always pole politic and we're also looking for sponsors. So if you have a book, you have an album you're about to come out with, your record label, your uh, magazine, anybody that has something they're trying to promote. Let me know. You can email me at polepoliticking at gmail. And we can work something out, work out a deal. But yeah, I'm looking for sponsors, so hit me up. And I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next episode. I holla. Popolitikin.com. What's up, everybody? This is Poe from Popolitikin.com. I'm, I'm into wholesale real estate. I did an online course and I thought it was pretty cool, so I want to share it with y'all. The name of the course is called the Varsity Class, and it's an online course that will teach you the tools to become a real estate investor. This course will show you everything you need to know about wholesaling properties and real estate that can potentially earn you $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 or more. So you can make a lot of money in this wholesale real estate. This is a good course to get you uh, get your foot in the door. So you can change your life today, and the link is bit.ly backslash pole homes so bitly backslash pole homes with an s so thank you check it out i'll holla